Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm back in the Lake District National Park and it's an absolute stunner of a morning. Not a breath of wind, there's a bit of clag on the tops, but most importantly it's dry and we're not forecasted any rain. And that puts me in an extremely good mood because last time I was in the lakes I was up that bad boy there and we got soaked. It was blowing an absolute hoolie and it was a bit of a wild day. So as you'll have seen in the title, today I'm doing the Deepdale Horseshoe, which is one of the classic Lake District horseshoe walks. Oh, I'm just going to quickly show you that. How cool is that? All the ferns growing on the tree. That's awesome. And the Deepdale Horseshoe is situated in the Eastern Fells of the Lake District National Park. We're going to have a total of six weighing rights to bag today, the highest of those being Fairfield, which if you've been to the Lake District before and done a, a bit of hiking, there's a high chance you've done Fairfield because the Fairfield Horseshoe, which is a route from Ambleside, is an extremely popular, if not the most popular horseshoe walk in the Lake District. So you can start from Ambleside. I'm not expecting to see many people up here at all today, to be honest, until I get to Fairfield, as the Deepdale Horseshoe is just Nowhere near as popular. So I parked down here in Patterdale, pain display car park, five pounds for the whole day. Can't get better than that in the lakes. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the Eastern Fells and the Far Eastern Fells, absolutely stunning. There's some real hidden gems in this area. So if you're wanting to explore a bit further out of the kind of tourist hotspots, there are some awesome walks to be done in this part of the Lake District. According to the book, which I got this route from, it should be about 17 kilometers long. So I'm going to head on to the first wing right of the day now, which is called Arneson Crag. And then from there, it's onto Burke's. Then from there, it's onto St. Sunday Crag. And then from there, it's onto Fairfield. And then we'll kind of turn back on ourselves. Then it's onto Hart's Crag. And then lastly, it's Hartsop above Howe. I can never remember the names of the weighing rights, I'm awful. But yeah, we're going to head on to Arneson Crag. I'm going to enjoy these awesome views. What a morning. Arneson, Wainwright number one. Next stop, this lump here, Burks. Only a quick check in, I'll have a proper catch up up on Burks around St. Sunday Crag. I'm going to head into that mist, into the fog, and I'm so stoked because I know it's going to be epic up there with the mist rolling in and around the hills.
Wainwright number two, Burks. And as you can see, we're spoiled for views up here. Can't see a thing. I think if we go over here, we can just about see all's water down in the valley. And on a clear day, the views from up here would be stunning. But if we look up to the sky, I'm seeing some shades of blue up there. So as the forecast predicted, I think it is supposed to clear up a bit and lift. Yeah, I think it's just rolled in at the wrong time. However, it's still properly cool. I don't know why, and I said this on one of my Kinder Scout videos when it was like this, I kind of like it when it's like this. It feels really eerie, a bit spooky. And once it clears, it makes that two minutes where you get to see a view so special and it just makes the whole thing worth it. So yeah, I'm very positive that uh, it's gonna clear and I'm going to manifest that these clouds are going to clear and we'll have spectacular views when we're up at St. Sunday Crag or around Fairfield. Trust me, it's gonna work. And that climb up to Burks was, to put it nicely, absolutely disgusting. It was like this the whole way, relatively short, but very very steep so that was a proper lung burner and i tell you what guys that manifesting it's starting to pay off because we're starting to get some sort of a view and we can see where we're going now this big lump that also looks disgusting to go up but yeah we're going up here next saint sunday's crag and this is what i was talking about when the crag clears for a couple of minutes it makes it all worth it Positivity and positive thoughts and thinking it always produces some sort of a result. And as we're heading to St. Sunday, you can see where we're going up here, I'm seeing some snow. And I love some snow, so I'm super stoked right now. So, I'm gonna crack on up to St. Sunday. Mr. Sunshine has showed his face, which I am extremely buzzing about. Burks is still in the cloud over there, but we're not there anymore. We're going up to St. Sunday, which is covered in cloud. But I'm hoping this is only going to improve. Wayne Wright number three, St. Sunday Crag. Quick look at the snow. You don't want to be standing on that there because that is just a drop. But yeah, the wind is bitterly cold up here. I did look at the weather for the tops and it's supposed to be zero degrees. Factoring in the wind, it feels like minus temperatures today, definitely. So I'm not hanging around. Every single time I've been up to Fairfield, which is the next Wayne Wright, it's been windy and it's been pretty cold even in the summer. So I'm not going to be hanging around up at Fairfield. 
and the clag has returned i'm still positive that it'll clear again like last time according to my watch we're at 2680 feet so we're just below the highest point of the walk so i'm very positive once we've got to fairfield and we've dropped down a bit it will clear up again i'm hoping but yeah it's been an awesome hike so far i think we're just coming up to two hours and we're not far off halfway so making really good progress how many miles have we done and we've done about four miles st sunday crag the actual crag itself is just down there to my right big drop i don't know too much about the climbing in this area but i presume there's some climbing routes and uh scrambles that can be done on it but yeah i shan't be doing that today and we're dropping off st sunday uh, peak now i think we dropped down quite a bit which is a little bit annoying because it means we're gonna have to go back up but i'm trying to get a fitter so it's good for that so yeah we'll drop down to this little valley and then head up to fairfield which is the highest peak of the day and it will be busy up there i'm sure so i'm gonna crack on we're gonna head into this if it was clear you would be able to see fairfield somewhere around here and then down here is deepdale fingers crossed it's gonna clear up and i almost forgot to say saint sunday's snack because i have a little snack at every wayne right i'm not someone who stops and has lunch i'm more of a, a grazer throughout cliff bar crunchy peanut butter i had one at the last wayne right eight out of ten really good really really good and i'll uh, i'll show you what we've got at the next wayne right because i've saved the best to last for sure We're in route number four, Fairfield. A very, very misty Fairfield. I didn't hang around once I got up to the actual summit of Fairfield as it was, as I thought, pretty windy and very cold. But now we've dropped down onto the other side. The wind has gone again, which is really nice. And the climb up to Fairfield, that little ridge that I went up and the peak was called 
Kofa Pike. I've never heard of it before. I've been up to Fairfield a few times and I've never really noticed it because I've always come back down the way I'm going now. So I've never ventured over um, towards Kofa Pike and yeah, it was really fun. It was a little scramble and there were definitely some more technical routes you could take if you wanted to. It was such a fun little last climb of the day, really. And the clag and the mist and everything cleared on that final last climb. So we had some awesome views and you could actually see the Deepdale Valley, which I was buzzing about because I really wanted you guys to see it. So you could see the whole horseshoe. And yeah, it was just awesome views, awesome little climb. Really enjoyed it. And the section of the horseshoe run now actually crosses over with the Fairfield Horseshoe. I'm heading towards Hart's Crag, which is a Wainwright that is on both the Fairfield Horseshoe and the Deepdale Horseshoe. And according to the watch, we're nearly six miles in now. So that was Hart Crag. Look at that view as well, by the way. Unreal. Okay, I've got to stop talking and show you that. So I've decided to have my first sit down of the hike. And this view that just keeps on appearing when the cloud disappears for a few seconds is absolutely nuts. So we're on for another snack review. The cliff bar I had before the peanut one, eight out of 10, really good. Now this, this is possibly my favorite hiking snack out there. It's the Cheer Charge Flapjack with, uh, with banana, so it's banana flavor. And I know some of you are probably gonna go, oh, banana, that's horrible. Trust me on this one. This is a 10 out of 10 hiking snack. They do other flavors. They do like a salted one, a salted caramel, I think. But Cheer Charges are just, yeah, really, really good. So I'm gonna quickly uh, munch this. And then I'm going to enjoy these views for a few minutes and then I'll probably get cold. And then we're going all the way down this ridge, hearts up above how. So that will be our sixth, which is right there. Now you can see the clouds just uh, disappeared. So yeah, that little peak there, that's where we parked around that corner there. So we hit the valley and go along the valley for like a kilometer. So we parked just down there in Patterdale. But yeah, we're going to head down here now. Awesome, awesome route. I really, really highly recommend doing it and I haven't even finished it yet. The Eastern Fells, I'm telling you, get yourselves up here. You won't regret it whatsoever. I absolutely love it. And just look at these clouds. Awesome.
So we're at the sixth and final wane right of the day. Hot top above how, and the mist and fog has well and truly returned to the tops, as you can see. So I think we actually made it up there at the perfect time really, because we did get some decent views um, on the way up especially. But now, it just looks like that sort of thick mist that isn't going anywhere. All downhill, back down to Patterdale, which is just around the corner here. So it's a little bit of a slog back to the car now, but I'm very glad I did it this way round because I don't think we would have had such good views if I'd done it this way round because we would now currently be up on St Sunday Crag and there won't be a single view up there. One thing I will say is the descent down from Fairfield down onto this kind of ridge here was a little bit sketchy going down. I'm sure going up would be all right, but going down, I did have to shove the GoPro in my pocket because I needed both hands. So yeah, if you're coming down off Fairfield, the actual footpath on the map, so where the green dots are, um, will take you down the sketchy bit. And there is a black dotted line on the map as well, which also marks kind of like a more unofficial footpath. And I saw that on the map, and I think that's a little bit less sketchy. So I know for next time, I'll definitely still go down the craggy bit because it's fun. But if you're wanting to do it and you don't really fancy kind of going down a scrambly section, I think there is a an easier bit just further on around the corner. It's the sort of thing where I'd definitely take a look at the map and assess it yourselves because I didn't actually see that other footpath. And according to my watch, we're coming up to eight miles now. And I think it's about two to three miles. I'm gonna say just over three, to be honest, looking at how far I've got to go. So we'll smash it out, get back to the car. I'll show you the final kind of views of the walk. And also I think that wing right there might actually have been my 100th Wainwright in the past year, which is pretty cool. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And the goal is to hopefully get them all done by the end of this year. But anyway, enough of me talking. I'm gonna head back along the ridge down to Patterdale. made it back to the car in Patterdale. The walk ended up being just under 12 miles. Absolutely awesome route. And there was a few scrambly sections, which I wasn't expecting whatsoever. So that was great fun. But yeah, if you're a bit unsure on scrambling, maybe give the uh, Fairfield horseshoe a go first, because that's awesome and it's pretty plain sailing, uh, that route. I stopped filming once I got back down to the road and it started drizzling and it has well and truly gone back to being pretty horrible. The cloud cover is really low, so we got back. Perfect timing. But anyway, I've got a two and a half to three hour drive back to the Peak District now. So I'm going to crack on because I'm so ready for some food and a hot shower. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I've had a load of new subscribers recently. So welcome to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. All of your support means the absolute world to me. Loads of videos coming soon. 
thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.